I keep it real You already know the deal And I don't care how you feel Cause I just gotta keep it real And this has been us, keeping it real Oh, I'm just keeping it real, homie I'm just keeping it real Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's edition of the Real Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, Jamie, and this week I am joined by yet another wrestler who somehow uh, seems to have like a million years of wrestling experience in what they do, but only debuted this year. Like, how on earth am I finding these hidden gems of people? I don't understand. But anyway, here he is. He is the doctor inside of the wrestling ring. It is the one and only Dr. Proctor. Yay. Thank you very much for the intro. Really so, nice. so it was what? May? Beginning of May? This so, year? Yeah, or end of um, April? I'm trying to remember. The, yeah, the for Love of Wrestling convention. Uh, yeah. Future Shock do a show there. And it was then. I feel awful for not being able to remember the date. <laughs> But yeah, it was like late April, early May, around then. 29th of April. There we go. That's when it was. Well, that, that, that would, yeah. That's when it was. <laughs> I only know because it was the Saturday, wasn't it, for the love of wrestling when yes, they did the show. Yeah, that was my hen do. I came to the Sunday. So that's the only reason I remember the date. Nothing else. That is the only reason. Because, <laughs> uh, again, I talked with Prince Pele about this and we were mm-hmm. having a chat about it. And I was like, oh, I didn't get to see the show. And he was like, why? What were you doing? Something better. I was like, yeah, I was getting drunk. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd have preferred it to have been there, but it wasn't. Um, so did you debut in the same match that Prince Pele did? Yes. So we were both in the Full of Wrestling Rumble and I was out literally just one entrance, but one entrance before him. So I came out, did my stuff, got all eyes on me. And then like a minute later, out comes Pele to punt me in the chin. And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Like you two seem to have like this little boxed off rivalry. Like we were going through all of his matches. I mean, bless his heart, he wrote them all down and he sent me the the pictures of every single match he's ever had. And your name came up quite a lot in all of his matches. Yeah, I I tend to be at the receiving end of too many Prince Pele losses. He's uh for our first few future shock appearances were all like rumble style matches and he eliminated me from all of them uh we did the same in an infamous match he eliminated me from that as well i think uh we had a singles infamous he eliminated me he beat me there as well i'm just <laughs> things so, don't go well for me when i'm against the think, LA. but no we we get around together a lot it's a lot of fun do you think you two are going to have this fight forever kind of feud going on? <laughs> Destined to do this forever. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. No, I'd, I'd love to, like, wrestle in more places because all those examples are, like, really early on. And even though we've only been at this almost a year now, I feel like both of us have come on so much in sh- such a short space of time. I feel like the match from June would be a completely different one than we would have now. Yeah. We both sort of figured out who we are as as wrestling characters and we're there's no like substitution for the experience you get of actually wrestling so like we're getting there we're developing ourselves properly now and i feel it'd be really interesting to see how different those matches would be oh i i genuinely think if you two had a match say like obviously you had the first one at the rumble in the end of april if you had another one at the end of april coming up I genuinely think that would be one hell of a match. Like, I, I, I'd like, I hope so. Yeah, I mean, having seen you both, I mean, genuinely, I've only ever seen you wrestle live once, but seeing you both wrestle and, like, just the way you are in the ring and the way you carry yourselves, like, this is why I genuinely do not believe that you've only been doing it, like, properly for such a short time, because it's like, no, mm-hmm. no like th- that's not possible. <laughs> I mean, I know you said, obviously, you've been training and everything, but... For me, yeah. it's like, no, no. there's no way you are that good in the ring without doing it for, like, five years. <laughs> like, you have got I'm to think, to think how, how long I've been training, actually. <laughs> if you say then, it's no, I've been training a lot longer than... 
<laughs> Sorry? If you say it's just a short amount of time, I swear I'm just coming off this podcast now. <laughs> no, no, because I know, like, I'd been training, I think, straight out of lockdown, I was training. That's still then, a short time. So it was, like, about two years, I think, before I debuted proper. Exactly, two years. That's that's nothing. For how good you are, I, I'm not just blowing smoke, do you know what I mean? For how good no, you guys are. It, <laughs> There's on no that. need for like you know you to be as good as you are. It's the end of 2023, and you, like you said, it's been about two years. That's it's insane to think of because it is such a hard craft. It really is, and for you guys to be as good as you are after just two years, that's I can't wait to see where you are in five years because that is just incredible. Oh, thank you. No, I appreciate <laughs> that. It really is like you know. I mean, obviously, I, I didn't get to see you at the uh, at your debut match at. Uh, for the love of wrestling but i'm assuming you're probably going to be at this year's for the love of wrestling i'm in uh future shock see here and i'll be like either the rumble again would be really fun but i think everyone on that show is sort of pushing for their own match it's like i want yeah. to do something <laughs> so i want to be the guy that teams with santino this year like because um, <laughs> last year everyone was so jealous of uh synergy and tony Wright and Lance and Sam and everyone was just frothing at the mouth when he came backstage and we're like, oh my god, I wish we could do that. But well, this is where I think you guys have the edge because of how good you're you've progressed in such a short amount of time. Like you guys could be the ones to do that. I genuinely think you could. <laughs> oh, hopefully so, because yeah, an opportunity like that would be insane. And everyone that was in that match this year have gone on to have incredible years like Synergy. Uh, sorry, meat wagon. Uh, yeah, meat wagon now. <laughs> meat I wagon. Name, like, <laughs> one, I genu- genuinely think they're one of the top teams in the country. Like anyone I've ever brought to watch some wrestling, and they've been there. They've always been like, "Oh my god, those guys are crazy good." And I think Tony's had like a, a breakout year. He's he seems to be everywhere now. Yeah. He's winning championships all over this place. He's like he's absolutely smashed it this year. He has. I mean, it's such a shame that he's he's done his ankle in because honestly, like, I, I watched the match where he won the title at um, Atomic, and oh my god! First of all, did not expect him to come out, and then obviously he wins the damn match, and I'm like, oh my god, this guy is just incredible, you know? <laughs> it seems. No, I like saw the it's... post online afterwards, and I was like, hang on, he wasn't even in this. Was text all yeah. mates that were there? I was like, what's going on? Yeah, no, I was like that. Genuinely, like. Uh, the, the guys came out and I was like, yeah, this is going to be a really good match. And then Tony Wright's music came on. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> and then that was it. Then I was like, as much as I love Joe Kessler, I'm sorry. I'm rooting for Tony Wright. Like, <laughs> you just lost already in my vote. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like everyone who's come through the Future Shock Performance Centre is just doing absolutely amazing. Yeah, and I think that's real credit to their coaching staff. Like, they really set you up to be as close to a complete wrestler as you can be before you even have a match. They want to make sure that you are, there's no like gaps in your fundamentals. You could go out there and have a match with anyone if you needed to. And yeah, I mean, Sam Bailey, Chris Ridgeway, Lizzie Evo, they're all fantastic coaches and they all bring something different. And it's really, yeah, like you said, everyone that's coming out there at the moment is, is they seem to be starting off on really, with a really strong foot, like coming off on their best foot, and it's it's gone really well. And yeah, I've loved I've loved my time there. Like I've trained a couple of the places, but the atmosphere at Future Shock is it's really good, and I feel really supported, and it's just fantastic. I sing the praises all day. Yeah, I mean, all the posts I see when it's like you know, all the group pictures of everybody, you know, oh, we've had a great training session. You just look at everybody's face and even though they're knackered because they've just been training, the smiles on the faces and it's just like, that's when you know you're somewhere where you want to be and somewhere that's actually, you know, helping you. And it's not just they're there to take your money and maybe show you how to do a back bump or whatever. They're there and they actually, they actually care. Oh, yeah. And it's like Bailey runs a, like a four weeks beginner course every few few months and oftentimes you'd be like right okay we've not covered everything and the four weeks is up doesn't matter come down for the next couple of weeks while we finish all this stuff you've paid me for the beginners you're not you're gonna have to pay for these extra classes you will we'll do it we'll get through everything because i want you to get this stuff down 
and that's that's really good that's really good of him definitely like you won't get that anywhere else as far as i know like anywhere else no, it's like you pay for the so course got to pay again. You get the full yeah course. yeah no you pay for the course you get the full course and it takes as long as it takes well see see that that's what i love about future shock and sam in general like they they actually give a damn about the people that are coming through and you know they want to build the next generation of wrestlers, which you can see. And, you know, like I said, you guys that are coming through and, well, have come through, you guys just are phenomenal. Going to watch a Future Shock show now, to me, it's better than going to watch any of the big leagues because, you you know, it's more intimate and you guys actually, you know, you can see you love what you do and it's not about the big paycheck. It's about the love of what it is you do. Yeah, I feel like it can't be about anything other than the love of doing it, like, uh, down the line, some people might do it for the paycheck, but I feel like mo- 99% of people that do wrestling do it because they grew up watching watching it. Like, yeah. you, you're into it because you're a fan. You're not like, this is the best way for me to earn crazy money. It's, <laughs> it's like, no, I want to be a bit of an idiot and live my strongman fantasies or, or like whatever the, the angle is. It's like you've watched some sort of wrestling and connected to that somehow. There's no, I don't think there's another way in realistically yeah i mean i would have loved to have you know trained and become a professional wrestler just my body will not let me like i would break in half if i even tried to step (laughs) into the ring and do what you guys do but like i can do it at my side of things and i can be like going to the shows watching it all having interviews with people like yourself and just being like i'm still that six-year-old little kid that started watching wrestling fell in love with it but now i get to do it on an even better level because I actually get to interact with you guys and I get to, you know, be at shows and stuff, not just watching it on my telly. So that to mm-hmm. me is even better. <laughs> Especially when like we're able to do things like this and we're able to like delve into like what drove you to becoming a professional wrestler and, you know, things like that. So so we'll go to that. What was it that yeah. got you into wrestling initially? So I used to watch uh old world of sport wrestling with my granddad at the weekend so he would have like he'd have these old tapes of british wrestling so we started off watching that and he would also show me like the wwe recap show on a sunday so we would watch these old british wrestling tapes and then we'd watch the wwe weekend recap thing and that was my first intro to it was through my granddad and i think i was hooked from then like all the way through childhood i was obsessed fell off for a bit uh, but then I think when I was at uni, I sort of got back into it in a big way and sort of became a, like properly obsessed for a good while. It was like the only thing I would talk about. I'm sure it drives my fiance mad, but <laughs> for a good chunk of time, that would be like, this wrestling thing happened. And she's, she's not like remotely interested in it. So I'm just chewing her ear off and she's like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> she's just smiling at you and agreeing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, you know, I know how that feels though, because I was the same years ago. It was that was all I'd talk about, and all my friends were just like, "We shut up. We don't care. Like we don't watch wrestling." <laughs> I, but I do, and this is what I, you talk to me about stuff I don't care about, and I listen, so you can do the same. <laughs> so you just need yeah. to use that on her when she starts telling you about shopping trips and stuff. Just bring wrestling up; it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, world of sport, like something that was huge over here, and. Um, for many many years I was the same my granddad he basically forced me to watch everything and anything that was wrestling related um so who then from world of sport WWE whichever one it was who was it initially though that caught your eye which wrestler was it or which wrestling style was it that made you think you know this is interesting I want to watch this uh it might not be the most common answer but I tag team wrestling's always been my favorite kind of wrestling uh so i think too cool were the first wrestlers i was like oh my god these guys like my cousin and i when we were kids playing about would be grandmaster sexy and scotty too hearty did you do the dance uh, we yeah we did the dance (laughs) we 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 would always play as them on the games we had the figures we were we were obsessed with too cool and we were like that's really the first thing that got us in but then through them, we ended up really interested in like the Dudleys and the Hardys and Edge and Christian because you know, it was like that era. So like yeah. late nineties, early two thousands, really peak tag team wrestling time. That was, was the bet. Like yeah, that was the era that really got me interested 
properly in wrestling. Yeah. I mean, tag team wrestling, to me, that is the most underrated. Like, And people don't usually cite that as something that snagged their interest and kept them involved. Like like you say, it's very obscure to have somebody go, oh, yeah. well, it was actually a tag team, you know. Um, like, I absolutely adored, like, late 90s, early 2000s tag team wrestling because it, it was just so chaotic and just so much talent in there. Like, even Kai and Tai, for the, for the sake that they were supposed to be a funny little tag team of Takamichi Noko and Funaki, like it was just amazing just having them randomly appear every now and again and just trying to fight people it's like what are you yeah doing? but that was the thing anyone could sort of it wasn't like the later 2000s where they just throw a couple guys together right, right there's your tag team it was like every, even like you said kind was like a weird little team but everything sort of felt like it made sense and like these teams were teams they're proper teams yeah, proper and they, teams, they not just... got the tag team like fundamentally they understood what tag team wrestling was even though it was as chaotic as you said i think when tag wrestling is good it's the best wrestling you can watch oh, but yeah. when it's bad it's some of the worst yeah completely agree so would you say you would want to be more of a tag wrestler or are you happy being a singles guy and going along i really enjoy being a singles guy at the moment because it's a lot easier, to be honest. Uh, I don't have to worry what three other people are doing. I can focus on what I need to do and working with the other guy. Like It's a lot easier to deal with the one way or the other back and forth between two of you than it is to have three relationships in the single match going on. It's, ve- it's a lot of work that goes into it. I'm, I want to do more tag stuff because yeah. I love watching it so much and I'd really, really like to get involved. But for now, I'm really enjoying the single stuff. Uh, I think if I find the right tag partner, I'd like to really get stuck into some tag stuff properly. Like I don't get enough opportunities to train yeah. in tag stuff, so it'd be interesting to do. See, but, I think you've got two perfect tag partners, haven't you? <laughs> Who you could uh, possibly join forces with i won't say on here obviously we'll we'll keep that little bit you know of your personal life there but there is two yeah. men that you could very well have a great tag team with well, a six-man tag with and you know go that way <laughs> make some trios titles why not let's have it that way <laughs> um, hopefully uh at some point yeah because yeah obviously i've got plenty of mates and really close friends that are in the wrestling scene and they're, but they're doing their own thing we're all doing our own thing if the opportunity arises to do tag stuff and trio stuff, that'd be amazing. But like, because you've even just, got the shirts, the... haven't you? You guys, you've even got the shirts. Like, you already. Yeah. So yeah, we made them for a fun <laughs> run because we were doing like, um, do you like Tough Mudder? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we were doing uh, what was it called? Because it wasn't a born survivor. But, I was going to say, was it the survivor it's... thing? Yeah, so it's like a tough motor thing, like obstacle course, 10k. So we, we made t-shirts for them because the the original idea was that everyone at Future Shock could go or a bunch of people would go, but then COVID happened. So then it came around to it. And the first one after COVID, it was just me and Bryak Strong were the only two left after COVID that were still wanting to do it because it'd been put off for so long. And then after that, yeah, um, we got Pele and a lad at Trains at Future Shock called Jamie involved. So yeah, we we're like, oh well, yeah, there's a team of us. We'll make we'll make up some t-shirts, uh, and they were originally just for the fun run. But every time we go anywhere now, we like we bring in the shirts. It's like yeah, yeah, I'll bring the shirts. Because <laughs> when when I had the interview with Pele, he was like, hang on, you've got Briac on, haven't you, coming up soon? And I was like, yeah. And then he went, and you've now got Dr. Proctor coming. And I was like, yeah. He went, you've got all three of us. I was like, yes, I know. I mean, I've had to reschedule Briac because he he wasn't well, and I was like, right, we'll we'll do it when you're better. And he was like. <laughs> Pele went. That's not fair. He went. You need to do it in order. <laughs> I was like, not my fault. I can't help it. <laughs> I was like, Some things are out of my control. It's not like it can be helped. At least the matter of <laughs> Well, this is the thing. I've, I've, I'm thinking now. I'm like, if if it's like early enough where I can get it, Briac in and get it done, I might be able to fudge it and release it in order. But now this <laughs> bit of our interview will just be wiped out. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah, no, you've talked about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it would just be this bit of me telling that little story, but you know, I'm pretty sure we can still keep it in just for the giggles. Um, so, but that's that's the team I want about. Like you three as a team would be a yeah. completely dominant force. I don't think anybody'd manage to beat you with that. 
No, I mean, you couldn't find three more different wrestlers, I don't think, but... Oh, no, definitely not. All your three styles are very, very, very different, but that would be a team that would be unstoppable. (laughs) Bit like the Bloodline, just not as weird. Like, you know. (laughs) Maybe weird. I'd be like, they're too cool. Too cool when Rikishi joined. (gasps) Yes. Oh, get Bryak to start doing some dancing like Rikishi. I would pay money to see that. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. That put the idea to him, like you and Pele, get him on board with that, and we'll see what happens. Like even if it's just a one night only thing, I will be there to watch. <laughs> oh, make it happen. We are going to make that happen. I I will persuade him on the podcast as well. Like see if he'll do it for giggles. Um, <laughs> get it from all angles. Yeah. yeah like used to. I'll just start hounding him for it. Yeah, we'll we'll get there. <laughs> you will be known as the new two call. It'll be fine. Um, you actually met. Scotty Too Hot, he didn't you not long ago? I did. I did. Uh, when he did the Future Shock show. I wasn't on it, but I was like, I can't not show up. Like, dream come true. I was like, sh- I was a uh, dude. I was sort of looking after him for this. So I was like um, a gopher for him, I guess. Like I was dealing with, I was doing his merch. Uh, I was bringing in the guys for the meet and greets. Uh, so I was just like helping him out. And I was just sort of losing it a little bit inside but I was trying to be like professional I was like no I'll do my job do this do that but inside I was like <laughs> inside you're probably fangirling <laughs> oh <laughs> it was mental <laughs> and uh my cousin the the one I mentioned earlier when we were both really into two cause kids he was originally supposed to be going to the meet and greet but couldn't make it and I told him and Scotty did him uh like a pair he called I did like a video chat gave him like a little thing he, didn't even show. he was such a nice guy. He was really nice. See, normally they and say like, don't. So you didn't need to do that, and then yeah. <laughs> yeah, normally it's don't meet your heroes because they'll let you down. But it sounds like that clearly wasn't the case with uh, Scotty Too High. Yeah, cause, yeah. Like I said, he didn't need to do any of that, and and he was like, no, we'll we'll do the thing for him. And yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I, I, see, I love things like that. Like people who go out of the way to do something nice when they don't have to. It's just like, oh, it's so warm and fuzzy feeling, and. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember who it was, but I was at a seminar once. One of the wrestlers was like, "You might have had like a real like as the wrestler, you might have had a really shit day, and you don't want to deal with that." Oh, sorry, if I'm sorry you're allowed to swear. It's fine. It's fine. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, "You might have had a really shitty day, but if they, uh, but this person, me and you, this could make their entire day. So if you could not be shitty for one moment to make someone's day, is that really so bad?" And I was like, "That's a really." really good way to think about things you can go back to me in a bad mood after you've dealt with that person because it's just it's it's a minute of your time yeah like I completely agree like even me when like I'm sat doing the stall at shows I might be having the worst day or be like in pain with my back or whatever but like especially when it's a little kid that comes up and they're like really excited to buy like the newest action figure and stuff and I'm just like right smile on my face I don't care how I feel this person is just so happy to be getting this like action figure off us. It's like, yeah, I'm yeah. going to make sure you have the time of your life. Like we have the little spin the wheel. I don't know if you've seen it. And um, a little girl at one of the shows I was at, she won the times 10 on it. So she got a hundred pound to spend on our stall. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, so overjoyed for her. Like my boss absolutely hated it because he was like n- losing money clearly. But I was like, I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> It is a little girl who has won this, and literally she picked out all the female figures. And I was yeah, like, and, uh, then that looked like, Yeah, that'll yeah, make a I was day. Like, That's like that a very small amazing. Team, and she was day. like, Can I have a hug? I was like, Gosh, can you come here? You have a big hug. And like, her dad showed us, like, she had a setup in a house, like, with the ring and all the, like, her little toys around it, you know, as the audience and obviously the people in the ring. Yeah, she had a little awesome. curtain and everything. I was like, Right, if you're not a professional wrestler in the future, something has gone wrong somewhere. Like, you need to do this now. <laughs> uh like stuff like that it's just little things that can make somebody's day and like for you guys Mm -hmm. it must be even better for you because obviously you're the one that's like giving them that amazing experience like obviously you do the meet and greets at future shock and stuff well like the photos in the ring kind of thing don't you yeah Yeah. and like for that that could make somebody's day and i just think it's so amazing that you know and you guys talk to the fans after shows are you know in the interval and stuff and like you don't have to do that, but you guys like make it something special for everybody that you actually speak to. Because I've watched you do it. I I, st- I sit there at our stall and just watch you all, and it's like, you know what? You guys are actually amazing, and you know you make these kids who come and watch our shows feel 
like the biggest person in the room because of how you interact with them. Yeah, because again, it's it's a small part of the day, and if that little thing is really important to someone, what it's not that much effort to put on a smile and listen to someone, or take a photo, or be nice to them. I mean, for some people, it might be a bit difficult to do that, but well, it shouldn't. For the majority, <laughs> for the majority, it's not. Um, like even even the guys who are supposed to be like the biggest baddest people around, you know, even they have a smile for the kids, and it's like oh, you, pro- you probably shouldn't smile, but you know, you've just made a kid's day. The fact that you've smiled at them, <laughs> yeah. So, or even I suppose you've got guys like MJF who lives as MJF. Yeah. Even he'll find a way to twist it and do that sort of thing. He's like, if him being MGF, maybe that's what makes it for the kid. And he'll like, yeah, I'm up and be even more of a, a dick. But I was going to say, if if, I, if MJF spoke to me and he was a complete and utter dick to me, it'd make my day. I'll be honest. Exactly. <laughs> exactly yeah. So looking back over this past, what well, I won't say year because obviously we'll we'll cut out the January to march bit so from april to now okay who has been your i won't say best opponent in terms of like who do you think you've had the best match with but somebody that you've learned the most from in the ring somebody that you think you know right they they've got it worked out they they can help me along with this they can mentor me kind of thing and just somebody that you've grasped things from yeah uh i think for that i'm gonna have to say joey hayes uh my singles debut at Future Shot was against Joey Hayes and his approach to the whole match the was it yeah, it made me think about wrestling in a completely different way. It was like I think wrestling nowadays, especially like on the independent scene, a lot of it is like doing all the moves all the time. It's very like high pace kind of style. So when I was pitching ideas, I was like, oh, we could do this. And it's like a spot with like five or six moves. It was a cool spot. But then he's like, or you could do a suplex and I could run away. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like getting the most out of every tiny thing. So you don't have to do a million things. You can do one thing. But if that one thing has an impact and you sell it like it's the most important thing, it's going to matter. So the way Joey Hayes approached that match and the thought process he had and the way we talked it through, I think, really made me think about how I step into a ring and how I wrestle and the little moments in between moves and just the little details that make all the stuff matter. Uh, I think he's there's a reason he's one of the busiest men in wrestling, I think. he's He's clearly... He's very smart to he's a very smart wrestler and I think he knows what, what you need. I don't yeah. Yeah. Just trying no, to find I, the proper words, but like no, Joey I, Hayes. I completely know what you mean. <laughs> but no, I like you said, I, I've watched him wrestle as well like a few times and I agree with you. He is the things he does, he doesn't have to do big flashy moves, but you remember things he's done in matches because of the way he does them. And no, just, his most popular bit is a enziguri like yeah <laughs> and it's brilliant to watch because it genuinely it's one of them things where you will watch his match and you will remember bits from it but it might not have been the match of the night but you'll think it is because you've you've remembered things yeah he's these moments that he's got down and he, he's made matter yeah. yeah so what would you say then has been your favorite match of the past what nine ten months uh, if I can't say Joey Hayes again, <laughs> it was really fun. Not only was it, yeah, like a really great learning experience, it was really fun. Uh, he was also like one of the few British wrestlers I got to see live for the first time when I was younger. So to wrestle him was a crazy That's experience. Fun. But if I can't say Joey, I probably have to say just a couple of weeks ago at the Future Shock Trophy Tournament, I wrestled. H.T. Drake in the qualifying rounds and that's another guy I'd seen like watching what culture wrestling back in the day uh, and uh, knowing him from like he's the ring guy up and down the country like so yeah. I, I've, I've 
gotten to know him a little bit. I've seen him at a bunch of shows. I've seen him wrestle a lot more recently. And I think we had a really fun match. Uh, again, he's got a really good mind for it. And yeah, we just, it was a silly, funny match that did everything it needed to. It was a good time for us. It was a good time for the crowd, everyone. It just worked really well and it was a lot of fun. And the fact that I won was pretty good as well. <laughs> So, obviously, you have had, like, quite a, a number of opponents in the past, like, 10 months. Out of all of those, mm -hmm. is there any that you would want to team up with? Uh, other than the obvious Pele and, well, I would say Briac. I've not wrestled Briac. I'd love the chance to. But, yeah, Pele is an obvious one, as we talked about earlier. But... Anyone else I've wrestled, I think. Uh, CP Riley would be really fun to get in the ring with. I think that would be a really funny dynamic. Uh, his genius stick, my, my doctor thing, I think it could be really fun that together. That would work really well, yeah. Yeah. Um, we've had a couple matches against one another now, and I think we both approach wrestling in a similar way, so we get on quite well. And yeah, I think we'd be a really funny team. So yeah, that, that, CP would be really good. That would be good. I, I, yeah, I could see that being a good tag team. Who then from any company now, so Future Shock or you know anywhere else that you've worked, who would you like to wrestle going forward in the next year? I had just mentioned it. Bryak Strong would be a, a huge one. Uh, I think he's. A rare kind of wrestler. You don't get those like monster wrestlers anymore. And I feel like he's really coming out as one of those like monster guys. So that'd be fun to have a match against him. Uh, I recently had a four way with CP Riley, Lance Rivera, and Bailey. I think a one on one with Bailey would be really fun because he's my coach. And that's a whole thing. People that I haven't faced at all. Uh, let me think. I think two bit. He's a fantastic wrestler. Mm -hmm. I'd love the chance to wrestle too a bit. That would be good. Yes. And uh, there's, there's so many. Like, I'm trying to think. There's loads and loads of guys. Uh, maybe the Quinlans as well. Mm -hmm. Again, tag team wrestling. I just love tag team wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> so watching everyone I'm thinking of when it comes to it is like tag wrestlers. Quinlans, Meat Wagon, Act 2. The, yeah, I just love tag wrestling. Yeah. See, there we go. We just need to put you in a tag team now, and you've got so many feuds there that <laughs> we, go. we could always just jump into. <laughs> um, obviously, I'm conscious now of like time, and I don't want to obviously hold you up for the entire day, kind of like me yes. and Prince Pele did for an hour and forty minutes. Um, <laughs> do you know we stayed on that call after that as well, and still talked. I think we had like a two hour phone call. <laughs> yeah, interview done now. Let's just shoot. Yeah, it's. Well, it was more of interview done now. Here's the pictures during the interview I said I was going to send you. And I, mean, I was like, oh, mate, like, I need to go to bed. It was like getting on to 11 o'clock at night or something. Um, no, so I, I passed my bed. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do that to you. Obviously, that would just be me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so my final thing then, um, let us know, um, obviously, all your socials that people can follow you on, um, any events that you know you're going to be on um, in the next upcoming months or whatever. Um, this is this is basically a time to sell yourself. So I'm mm -hmm. going to just say, promoters, please book the man, incredible wrestler, and please now do. you can go. <laughs> yeah. So socials, you can find me at Doctor Proctor PW. That's Doctor Proctor spelled out, Proctor with an ER. Uh, that's on X and Instagram. Uh, if you want to book me, book Doctor Proctor at gmail dot com. Uh, places I'm going to be. Uh, regularly you'll be able to find me at Future Shock. Like I said, that's the home promotion. I train there. Hopefully I'm on a lot more shows with them next year because I've had a great time. Um, I might be with OTP, currently talking with them. Uh, that's all I've really got talks with at the moment. So anyone who wants the doctor on this show, please hit me up. I'd love to get as many places as possible in 2024. I really want to get out there and show what I can do and 
we'll we'll slip your name into conversation when we chat with bookers and things and you know please do <laughs> oh i will don't i do it for everybody anybody that i meet that i think is a good wrestler i'm like oh by the way have you booked so and so because they need to be on the show <laughs> so like i said before this will either get you blacklisted or you know booked somewhere one of the two well, keep your <laughs> Well, thank you so very, very much for giving up your Sunday evening to, you know, have a chat with us and do no, this. No, it's been really fun. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, obviously, you know, more than welcome to come back. Um, uh, maybe next year we'll, we can have a catch up and see how yes, your years progress. We can recap, we'll see how we things can. have changed. We can, yeah. Um, so I'll just say now, obviously, go follow um, Dr. Proctor on other socials. Make sure, please, if you can, go to Future Shock shows. They are absolutely incredible. I love going to them. I've only been to a few, but. My favourite thing to do now is go to Future Shock shows. So make sure you go and you might be able to see Dr. Proctor in action. And don't forget to keep it real here on The Real Wrestling Podcast. Bye. See you. I'm just keeping it real, homie. I'm just keeping it real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just keeping it real, homie. I'm just keeping it real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just keeping it real, homie. I'm just keeping it real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this has been us keeping it real on the Real Wrestling Podcast.